Hello, my name is Frank Nui. I'm from FU Berlin and welcome to my deep learning lecture. Today we speak about directive gen generative nets and specifically I will talk today about variational autoencoders. So generative nets or generative learning is, a, is an area of machine learning where we are trying to observe a probability distribution by samples and then learn this probability distribution and have a way to generate new samples from this probability distribution. We have seen restricted Boltzmann machines as a classical example of such a generative a network or a generative machine learning method and in this lecture we will start with directed generative nets and specifically variational autoencoders which are a very powerful and famous well-known example of generative learning. Let us directly look at an example. So what you see here on the right are samples of images of faces of VIPs or celebrities. And let's say we have a database of such faces of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands examples. We show this database to our trained neural, tra trainable neural network. And what we want to achieve is the following. We want to learn a feedforward model, so a directed model, which takes random noise as an input and then learns a transformation of these random noise variables to actual images that look like faces from our database. So something that learns to generate faces of VIPs or something that looks like faces of VIPs. So that is the task here. And then there are different approaches in terms of how do we train this model and how do we measure a difference between the generated output and the probability distribution represented by the samples we have seen. There are also differences by how the architecture of this generative model looks inside and um, there are differences what can be used as an input. But the general idea is um, as an input we want to do something like s random sampling from a probability distribution that is easy to generate. So for example where we have an image where each pixel has an um, activation that is sampled from uh, independent Gaussian normal variable. So often these are uncoupled or independent random variables in the individual dimensions or pixels in this case of the image because that's easy to do. And then what we learn here as the neural network is the complex dependencies between these pixels. So we learn the coupling in some sense in order to wire this randomness together so that in the end we still have randomness that samples from the database of images of the different types of faces and expressions that you can have here. Uh, but it's certainly no longer uh, uncorrelated between pixels but, but basically we transform this randomness into a randomness which is meaningful within our uh, set of of samples that we want to generate. So the idea of directed generated nets is the following. We want to learn to sample a probability distribution P of X, where X are the elements that we're interested in sampling, for example, images. And in general, we assume that this is intractable in the sense it's difficult to directly generate samples from P of X. Instead, we have another probability distribution, P of Z, that is easy to sample, such as a multivariate Gaussian distribution. So we sample Z from P of Z, and then we transform these random variables C with some function g that depends on some parameters that we are training for. And uh, with this we generate samples of x. So the aim is 
that uh, the function g is trained so that its output x approximately samples from the target distribution p of x. And usually we don't have the target distribution p of x given explicitly, but in the form of some samples of p of x. Okay, and then we need to ask ourselves, okay, how can we measure the difference between the output of our generator and the samples that implicitly define p of x and uh, how can we turn that into a loss function that we can use in order to train our neural network parameters theta. Okay, before going uh, into neural networks, um, we want to uh, look at some examples of, of this idea. This is basically, the, so the idea borrows on transformation of random variables, which is used a lot in statistics. And a simple example of that, if you want to, um, if you want to generate samples from um, normal distribution with non-zero mean mu and a covariance matrix sigma, so a general non-isotropic normal distribution which has an arbitrary covariance matrix sigma, then you can do the following: you can uh, generate samples z from a standard normal distribution with mean zero and, and, and an identity matrix as the covariance matrix. And then you transform Z through this linear transformation where you multiply it with matrix L and add vector mu, whereas L uh, results from the Koleski decomposition of the covariance matrix as follows. So the covariance matrix is L transposed L. Right, so that's a way to turn a standard normal distribution into a normal distribution with given mean and covariance matrix. Okay, another simple example. Let's say you're interested in generating samples from a univariate distribution P of X. How can we generally do this? Well, if P of X is a positive distribution. In other words, it's greater than zero for all x in in the at least in the range that we're interested in, but ideally for the whole real numbers. Well, then we can compute the cumulative distribution function, which is the integral of the probability density from minus infinity to x, and we can invert this function because when p of x is a positive distribution, q of x is strictly monotonous, so it's monotonically increasing and therefore invertible. Then we can do the following. We can sample z from a uniform distribution between 0 and 1, and then we ask what is the x where the cumulative distribution function obtains this value c that we have just sampled. And because q of x is invertible, we can do this. So we define g of z to be the inverse of the cumulative distribution function evaluated at c. So this transforms this simple z as a uniform random variable into a sample from the desired univariate distribution p of x. That can be quite complicated. Okay, so these are standard examples where transformation of random variables is used in order to sample from a simple distribution and then transform it in order to get a more complex distribution. And now the idea is that we take this idea much further we use something like a neural network or a very complex trainable distribution G in order to take our simple random input Z and turn them into something interesting, such as samples from an image database. Here's another simple example. So um, let's take inputs from a uh, random normal distribution from a standard normal distribution with zero mean and covariance matrix i, so the identity covariance matrix, and transform them through this 
equation here. So then these random variables become transformed into something that lies on a circle and uh, they scatter around the circle line. So you can generate quite interesting shapes in the output distribution if you learn a suitable function. That's the idea. So now we want to replace G by a neural network a feed-forward neural network and we want to train the parameters theta in order to achieve sampling from the correct distribution or from a distribution that is similar uh, or that could have given rise to the samples x that we have for training. So two well-known neural, neural network architectures that follow this principle are variational autoencoders where um, we have actually two networks, an inference neural network and a generator neural network. And another example are generative adversarial networks, which also consist of two networks, generator networks and discriminator networks. And then there's actually a third important class that is flows or normalizing flows. And these, um, three types of directed generative networks differ by how we train them and whether they have an explicit um, way to compute the probability density that we're generating from or not. And so in this lecture I will discuss variational autoencoders and that comes next. So before talking about variational autoencoders, let's first look back at autoencoders. And um, let's use a simple example. We have an autoencoder for images. So we have images as input as, and as output. We have an encoder and a decoder network that go from generally a high dimensional image space to a low dimensional latent space and then back to high dimensional image space. And we imagine for it now that the latent space encodes certain properties of the image. Of course, when we train an autoencoder, we do not get a one-to-one -one correspondence of latent space dimensions and particular properties like smile, skin tone, gender, etc. But let's imagine that uh, the latent space encodes essential information like this. Okay. So that's an that's a autoencoder. An autoencoder is trained just by minimizing the reconstruction error after the decoder with respect to the input. And it learns to generalize because the latent space is lower dimensional than the input or the output. So it cannot simply learn to map individual samples, uh, output samples to input samples by heart because it has to go through this information bottleneck. Okay, so that's an autoencoder, a deterministic autoencoder. Now a variational autoencoder changes this as follows. We say instead of a single value for each attribute, for each latent space um, um, dimension, we have a probability distribution for them. So for example, use uh, let's assume we have an, a latent space attribute that corresponds to smile. Um, then for this kid, this kid looks pretty unhappy. So it's somewhere here in the negative range. And this kid looks very happy, so it's in the positive range. But then there's Mona Lisa and the Mona Lisa, you, you're not really sure if she's smiling or not. So she would have maybe a zero mean but a large variance, large uncertainty of whether that's a smile or not. So that's the idea. In a variational autoencoder, we have a probabilistic description of latent space variables. And to be more precise, a variational autoencoder is a directed model. So it's a feed-forward neural network. So we can train it with purely gradient-based methods and backpropagation. Um, the encoder is um, representing the input 
as a probability distribution. Yeah. So in, instead of um, just a vector in latent space that we map to in a normal autoencoder, we instead map from the input to a probability distribution. So to something like a mean vector plus uncertainty around it. When we decode then from the latent space, we sample from this distribution, feed it into the decoder and get, get an output. Okay. So that means we have our encoder. Our encoder is a deterministic neural network. We take our input, we map the input to a probability distribution. Yeah, so instead of encoding a latent space vector, we encode the moments of a distribution in latent space, such as the means and the variances of Gaussians. We then sample from this probability distribution. So if we repeat this twice, we get different latent space vectors. And then we decode these latent space vectors to um, um, representations of x, so images, for example, again. Now, since we minimize the reconstruction error of the input and the output m images still, that means uh, if we sample from, if we sample, sample different points from the encoded distribution, so if we sample nearby points in latent space, because of the minimization of reconstruction error, we expect to get similar outputs, similar to each other and similar to the input. So that means a variational autoencoder, because of this uncertainty and the sampling around nearby latent space points, we get a smooth latent representation, or we try to regularize um, uh, the encoder and decoder network such that the latent space representation is smooth in the sense that if you move a little bit around in latent space, you get similar outputs after decoding them. Whereas this is not the case with a normal autoencoder. With a normal autoencoder, it can happen that after training, two latent space points that are very close by give rise to completely different images after decoding them, or two very similar images map to completely different points in latent space. In a variational autoencoder, we try to avoid it. We try to make the latent space smooth. 